everyone, this is Fantasy Ask, and welcome back to Clan Gen, the Warrior Cats Clan Generator game. In the previous episode, we had an invisible moon. And if you're wondering what that is, basically we had to skip a moon off camera because some of our warrior ceremonies did not go as planned. That was all fixed, however. And then we had, again, during the invisible moon, a surprise pregnancy. So our leader, Frostar, is actually expecting kids, so that is very exciting. But guys, there are going to be quite a few changes in this particular episode. Because now that Frostar is, you know, getting ready to become a mother, a queen, she's starting to view the clan differently and have some thoughts. And these thoughts have to do with splitting the clan. That's right guys, we are going to be splitting the clan. And there is actually going to be a great exile. So, after the chaos of the previous episode as well, right? I started realizing that I was getting overwhelmed by the amount of new cats and kittens coming in to our clan and you know when we started off I wanted to focus on the founding cats and their bloodlines and you know growing it into something amazing even though we have had some really sweet stories because we had for example the the silver kits and all of that coming in with owl whisker um, and then you know dark paw, air paw, and vile paw, all of those kind of things, even some of these cats over here like Hot Sauce, Bruce, um, Burm, and Bitten, we had really cool cats coming in and they definitely added to the storyline, but for example, when Daisy Wish got pregnant and she was getting ready to have Blue Stripe, I remember how excited I was in the build up of that and how excited I was when Blue Stripe was born. And then immediately afterwards, suddenly we had these three kids that kind of came into the clan and they had such strong personalities. Blue Kid was kind of, you know, pushed to the side a little bit. And a lot of the relationships were starting to focus around Whisper Eagle and his siblings. So, you know, I have been thinking a lot about it. And now that Frostar, someone who I have been waiting for many moons, right, to have her own litter, now that she's expectant, I don't want her kit to be lost in all of these cats, in all of this chaos, and I don't want to be ignoring her kit because I'm trying to learn who Icy Kit and Robin Kit and Sharp Kit and Mulberry Kit and Jump Kit are. So as such, like I said, there is going to be a great exile, but it is not going to be the malicious sort um, from Frostar's perspective. Essentially all she's doing is splitting the clan so that the founders, right, the founding cats and the clanborn of Feather Clan can stick here under her leadership and the rest of the kids and adults are essentially going to form their own clan um, in a different part of the beach. And the idea is that the adults who are going to be sent away, you know, to be exiled, they are going to be looking after the youngsters that go with them. Now obviously when this exile happens there is going to be I feel like a lot of heartbreak within the clan itself that has gotten so huge because you know we have these complex friendships, we have some mated pairs, we have um, like apprentices and mentors and friends and siblings but that is what has to happen. And if you guys are wondering, right, if you guys are wondering which cats are going to be staying with us, then let's have a look. So the cats with this kind of circle behind them, I suppose, are going to be the cats that are staying in Feather Clan. So there we go, guys. These are the cats that are going to be staying and every other cat is going to take part in this great exile and they're gonna es essentially be establishing their own clan in a separate part of the beach. So we have Frostar, Daisy Wish, Dawn Valley, Snail Dusk, Bloom Freckle, Charred Stripe, Iris Quiver, Cicada Lotus, 
and blue stripe staying with us so that we can focus more on the stories of our clan founders and their bloodlines as opposed to all of these new cats that are coming in. So okay, I need to go ahead and get that going. Ah, it feels so so strange, it feels so so strange for this to be kind of the thing, but um, that is the way it is going to be. That is the way it is going to be. So we're gonna have to say goodbye to some of these cats and Frosta has been, you know, discussing with Daisy Wish and they have been trying to coordinate with the medicine cats and everyone else in terms of how this is going to go and the reasons for it and making sure that, you know, the cats who are leaving do have another area of the beach where they can establish kind of their own territory. So we need some of these cats to start saying goodbye to each other and the sad thing is you guys might notice snail dusk for example is staying but sandy mask her mate is not so that is a relationship that she's going to actually be letting go of so we're gonna go over here and we are actually going to break it up between sandy mask and snail dusk now you know these two they have not on their own accord like broken up or they haven't had a terrible relationship uh, but they have had a lot of disagreements and their relationship I think has kind of stagnated so I don't think either of them would be too heartbroken by this change so that snail dusk you know is going to be saying goodbye to Sandy Mosk because he is actually leaving um, and the other I suppose difficult thing is going to be for Bloom Freckle and Dark Paw, although I don't think Dark Paw is going to be too upset by this particular chain, uh, change because he actually doesn't, we, we've kind of seen, he doesn't get along well with, um, geez, Bloom Freckle. He doesn't get along well with Bloom Freckle, which is, you know, kind of sad, but hopefully he finds another mentor when he leaves that is going to have a relationship, or the kind of relationship and guidance maybe that he wants from a mentor. So I want to go through what all these cats are thinking one last time, right? And then we are going to start exiling the cats. So let's start off with Frosta, wonders how Eggpaw is doing, that's right. That's right, but you know, the thing with Eggpaw, oh well, Eggpaw is not Eggpaw, Eggpaw is Eggnudge. But Eggnudge, he is going to be leaving with Berm, his mentor, so they aren't going to be separated. So at least, you know, they'll have that company and each other. Daisy Wish is assigning cats to the Dawn Patrol. Dawn Valley has the foul taste of bitter herbs in his mouth. He is hard at work. Um, he must be very excited because he's about to be a father, even though, you know, He's a senior now, but finally he's going to be a father, and I think that he does have his medicine cat den back to himself, his medicine den, um, because Hot Sauce is going to be leaving, and you know, she's going to be essentially the medicine cat in that new clan, so there is that, and so he, he's still hot at work. Hot Sauce offers tips to every cat in the clan, I think this is Hot Sauce probably, in preparation of the exile and in preparation of them leaving she is like for all the cats who are going with her she is trying to give them tips about things to look out for you know ways that they might be able to overcome danger like stick together in groups um, this is how we're gonna form like you know the cats that are going to be scouting the cats who are going to be moving with the main body of the clan because you know they are shifting locations so there is that Snail Dusk is seeing all sides of the argument. She can see why. Yeah, Snail Dusk, she's a mediator, right? So obviously, the ones who are having it a little bit difficult, maybe parting and coming to terms with it, they're speaking to Snail Dusk about it. And Snail Dusk is kind of seeing that she understands why Frost is doing what she's doing. But she also understands the cats who have grown very attached to each other and they don't want to leave and now they're kind of being separated. Okay, Juliet found a wonderful napping spot outside camp. Maybe that's the kind of the first place he's gonna take everyone so the little kids can take a break before they keep going. Sandy Mask curses a squirrel that just barely got away. He's already like 
trying to hunt and gather up supplies that they can take on their journey. Bruce confronts a clanmate about their behavior. Oh, Bruce. Oh, Bruce. Okay, so, you know, he, again, has it kind of tough. I feel like Bruce actually wouldn't um, be too upset about the decisions that are being made and the changes. I feel like maybe in his eyes he kind of needs a change of scenery because, you know, he was like super excited about Whisperpool becoming a warrior and that did happen and then soon afterwards, like in the moon afterwards, his own apprentice, Violetpool, who he was getting along um, very well with and actually the ghost flowers that he's wearing right now were a gift from Violetpool. Ah. That kind of happened so quickly. And I think when he looks at this particular camp and he looks at the shipwreck, he sees all these places where Violet Poe was and I think that upsets him quite a bit. So at least in this way, you know, also he's not being, I think that's, this is one place where he feels a bit reassured that he's at least not being separated from Whisper Eagle. Like that's one cat, one of the young cats he had a very strong bond with and at least he's going with Whisper Eagle. Okay, Bloom Freckle wonders how Dark Paw is doing. Ah, oh, look at Bloom Freckle. She's thinking about her apprentice. This is kind of the final time she's going to be spending with her apprentice, and she knows they've had a very, very difficult relationship, and Dark Paw hasn't been very fond of her, but she's wondering how he's doing because she's not going to be there anymore to irritate him or to train him. He's going to you know, be with the others, but he's probably gonna find another mentor. She's still in the final moments thinking about him though, which is very nice. Okay, Linja wants to compliment Arisko's fighting techniques. Okay, maybe he's last minute like teaching her a few things um, so that she's prepared when she leaves because, you know, she's gonna be one of the important warriors in the new clan when she goes. Bidden is wondering if kitty pet life is really so bad. Oh. Okay, Whisper Eagle is, you know, her former apprentice and she'll be going with him as well, so they're not gonna be separated. Gardenia pounced on some movement under the snow like a fox. Okay, he's really like showing um, his skills and how good he is and how helpful he's going to be. So he's going to be leaving with them as well. So is Pineheart. Almost got lost near some two-leg nests who is still recovering from birth. So they are going to have to take it slow when uh, they make their journey. But you know, her kids are going to be close with her. And instead of, you know, being cast out on their own, they will be all together as a big group. And here's the other thing, like in the future when we do find kits uh, and we send the kits away, um, within, you know, this story I'm imagining our cats are not abandoning or exiling the kits, they're actually sending the kits to this bigger clan who might occupy like a bigger space um, or a cozier space, you know, something where they will be able to cater for all those little kits that come in. Okay, Alwiska doesn't get any work done all morning, too busy climbing trees. Okay, I think she's maybe like scouting to see the paths they need to walk. Berm has the apprentices, very engaged in a very, very tall tale. Okay, I think um, as much as there is some um, sadness about being separated, I think there is also a little bit of excitement building in the youngsters and Berm is trying to add to that so that, you know, they don't, they don't feel mournful that they're leaving. Okay, Child Stripe is causing problems. She's one of the cats that are going to be staying. I feel like Child Stripe is causing problems. Uh, maybe because she has like friends, some of the friends that are leaving, you know, like Berm. She's close to Berm and Bidden, and they're going to be going. So I think she is causing problems so that she can delay them leaving. She's like messing up things here, messing up the like stuff there, maybe scattering some of the the prey piles so that and, and and like you know a little bit of the herbs that hot sauce needs to take so that they have to make another round, gather it all again, and the time it takes them to leave is getting more and more delayed, a little bit longer. Oh, child stripe. Okay, Iris Quiver saw a two leg petting a Lona. Cicada Lotus saw a two leg kit playing with a kitty pet. Uh, Whisper Eagle missed a catch and is still sulking over it. Don't worry, boy, you're gonna have plenty of chances when you go out with the other cats. Blue Stripe pretends to be busy. Okay, he's pretending to be busy. You know what? Blue Stripe actually became really, really good friends with Whisper Eagle, so I can kind of see how. And I feel like Blue Stripe, I don't know, but he strikes me as a very emotional cat. 
So I could kind of see how he's getting emotional seeing Whisper Eagle and the others leave. And he's trying to distract himself and like he's pretending to be busy so that they don't catch him crying. Oh, blue stripe. Okay, Eggnudge is sharing tongues with Frosta. Oh. So Eggnudge is, you know, spending a little bit of time comforting Frosta and giving his good wishes because he knows he's not gonna be sticking around and also she is expectant and you know he's not gonna be around when the kids are born or anything like that but he's still trying to show his little bit of care for her and she's probably not gonna be able to see them off daisy wish like most likely is gonna be seeing them off so oh egg nudge okay airport has so much to learn he is still grieving for his sister of course and al whisker is his mentor so he like his training won't be disrupted Dark Paw takes a part of Violet Paw's nest to put with his own, clinging to the fading scent. I think, yeah, it is going to be hard for Dark Paw and um, Air Paw to leave because these two, they, like the, I feel like even in the descriptions beforehand or the events beforehand with Air Paw and him trying to cling to his sister's scent, this place is the last place that has her scent so you know they're, they're having to kind of leave that behind so I think it'll be very hard for them. Icy Kit is hiding from the other cats. Robin Kit is whining about having caught frostbite despite just having stepped outside. Okay she's a bit dramatic. Sharp Kit is trying to force her way into being allowed to guard camp Okay, whereas I'm assuming everyone else is saying, no, you stay in the middle, you, all the kits, they stay in the middle, around all the, you know, between all the warriors so that you guys are safe. Mulberry Kid is careful not to stand under branches with snow on them, and Jump Kid is whining about the cold, so the little kits as well, I mean, it is Leaf Bear, so the little kits as well, they're gonna have to all stick very close together as they leave, but Frostar is adamant that before her kit is born, the clan does need to split. So we're gonna go ahead guys and we are going to start exiling the cats. Ugh. And it's not, it's not, I mean it is a great exile but you know, the clans discussed this, they've decided this, they are splitting the clans. So here we go guys, here we go. It is, it is starting now, it is starting now. Okay. Oh my goodness. You know, this is the other thing. Maybe I should check to see how they feel. Oh, Sandy Mask. Sandy Mask. I mean, some of these cats are going to be very... I think they're taking it hard, but you know, like we said, for our story purposes, we are not casting them out. They are splitting and leaving and moving to another place, but they're all going together as like this huge clan of cats. So, okay, everyone's moving, everyone's grooving, but at least they're all together, you know, so I feel less bad. Okay, so you go, Whisper Eagle, Egg Nudge, you can head out, Air Paw, you can head out, Dark Paw, Icy Kit, Robin Kit, Sharp Kit, let's see, Mulberry Kit, and Jump Kit. Okay guys, so these cats, all those cats, they have gone off. And look, these are all the cats outside the clan that we can still kind of see. And I imagine that, you know, they are all together in a clan. So in the future when, and I imagine they occupy like a different stretch of the beach. Right, that hasn't been claimed by anyone just yet. And so in the future, when we find extra kits or strays and stuff and they come in here, basically Feather Clan is going to move them or have them move to this other cl big, bigger clan that probably has you know more space um, and more resources. So that is that. I'm gonna have to think of a name for this particular clan. I'm gonna have to think like who might be the leader, who might be, we know the medicine cat, hot sauce is the medicine cat here, but I'm gonna have to think about like who's the deputy, who's gonna be the leader. 
So that's that's gonna be interesting. That's gonna be interesting. And obviously they don't have like a Oh you can change names. That is kinda cool. You can change their names. Okay. That kind of makes me excited because I can actually yeah, since we can't, you know, move things around for them. Yeah, no, we're not gonna do this. But since we can't move things around for them and like assign roles then we can assign roles for this other clan uh, by using the the names like so whoever is the leader will just add the star suffix to them and then we'll kind of in our story you know assign the deputy and um, have like a name for this particular clan so I think that's what we'll do you know what let me go ahead mm -hmm. I will why don't we do patrols yeah I think we'll do patrols and then I'm gonna go ahead just before events we are going to come back and take a look at like who the leader is and who the deputy is and who the mediator is and um, of that other clan and what the clan name is so I will have decided all this by that point for now though let's go out on patrol it is very strange to have such a small clan of cats but I am I am happier for it because I do want to focus on these guys more and I'm realizing how much I love blue stripe and how cute he looks I actually feel like blue stripe he looks like a very pretty cat to me so I, I like that but yes I am excited that we get to focus more on our founders and their bloodlines so okay let's head out on patrol we're gonna be sending Dawn Valley so let's get him to go and you know, gather his herbs the cold of Leaf Bear might have killed off a lot of greenery, but Dawn Valley knows that the dandelions are only playing dead. If he can get his paws on a plant, the roots will still hold fresh, milky white sap. Dawn Valley can't say it's fun, swiping away snow to scrounge for the stems and roots of wilted dandelions below, but what matters currently is that it's possible. Okay, so he's managed to grab um, his things, and I do feel like he's getting older. He is getting his only medicine cat and he is getting older. So I feel a little bit bad that he goes out on his own to grab all these things and you know, oh, it's Leaf Bear, but it's okay guys, it's okay. He knows what he's doing. Right. So, oh yes, we only have the six cats left. <laughs> I just, I forgot guys. We, this is the whole clan. We don't have pages and pages of cats anymore. Okay, so the rest of the clan are gonna go out together. My lovely boot, like Blue Stripe. My lovely Blue Stripe and I, and I really like um, obviously, you know, the name Stripe is something that was, the suffix was given to him based on, you know, his either traits or his appearance, you know, whatever it is. But I like the fact that his suffix is Stripe because it reminds me of Stone Stripe and it almost feels like, like an homage to Stone Stripe, you know, that we have a little blue stripe. So that, that's nice. Okay. So Blue Stripe, Iris Quiver, Bloom Freckle, Cicada Lotus, Daisy Wish, and Chard Stripe. They are going to be going out on patrol. So let's have a look. The patrol approaches a two-leg nest perched on the beachfront while hunting. Two uh, two-leg kids stomp through the sand dunes, scaring away prey and ruining the hunt. Okay, that is a little bit unsuccessful, but that's okay. The other thing actually, guys. The other thing actually. That we need to do before I jump to events. Yes, important thing I need to do before we jump to events. So, along with this whole, you know, focusing on the founders and their bloodlines, we do want to go ahead and have mated pairs that can give us kits. So, we are gonna have some decisions to make and some difficult decisions for couples like Iris Quiver and Cicada Lotus. So, Iris Quiver, I think for Iris Quiver and Cicada Lotus in particular, Cicada Lotus, you know, he was made into Stone Stripe beforehand and they did break up and then he found love with Iris Quiver at a time when they had like the, the clan had too many kits and nobody was really uh, focusing on that aside from Frostar. But I do think there's a part of Cicada Lotus that does want his own biological kits. And Iris Quiver, he's already had a chance at that. Like, Iris Quiver had Blue Stripe, you know? So he's already kind of 
experienced this and lived this part of life. Whereas Cicada Lotus hasn't. And he wants that. So I, I feel like it's kind of unfair for Iris Quiver to kind of keep Cicada Lotus or expect Cicada Lotus to be sated in this relationship when he's kind of experienced everything and after all of that he's chosen Cicada Lotus but Cicada Lotus hasn't been able to do this one thing that maybe he's also wanted as well. So I feel like Cicada Lotus is going to have to break... hold on a second. I think he's gonna have to actually break Iris Quiver's heart and end their relationship because Cicada Lotus, I mean, he does want his own legacy. He does want to have kids, you know, with someone. So he's gonna have to say goodbye to Iris Quiver. I don't think he regrets the relationship he had with Iris Quiver. It was very sweet and it was perfect when it happened um, for what it was. But right now, Cicada Lotus, like, his perspective has kind of changed a little bit. And he's looking around himself. He kind of wants what Iris Quiver had. And he wants what Frosta is having. You know, and what Dawn Valley is having. Like, he wants to be part of that legacy. So, he's gonna have to break Iris Quiver's heart. Oh, Iris Quiver. Oh, Iris Quiver. So, okay, guys. (laughs) That has happened. That's a change that's happened. So I'm actually going to think about this a little bit and then I'm going to come back and we're going to go ahead and assign some new mates, some new mated pairs between these cats. And then also I'm going to hopefully have made some changes to the other clan that are living outside of you know our territory and we'll kind of check back in with them. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, we are back. So, after much thinking and finagling, we have Drift Clan. So this particular group of cats are going to be known as Drift Clan because they have drifted away from the shipwreck to live in another part of the beach. And they are being led by Juliet Star. Because he has a lot of experience, I mean look at this, master experience, and since he has a bit of a unique backstory where he escaped from an abusive two-leg owner, you know, being a kitty pet, he has a lot of uh, knowledge about navigating the beach and the two-leg world and the space in between, and so the clan kind of trusts him with his guidance when it comes to that and his deputy is actually Sandy Mask. So Sandy Mask I definitely hope has learned quite a few things from being mates with a mediator and hopefully he'll be able you know as a good kid sitter, a dream walker um, and also being a loner again he has a little bit of a different backstory. Um, he kind of lived alone for a long time you know he's been through like a flood so he is kind of very aware of the dangers that come with living by the beach so between the two of them the clan feel pretty safe about where to avoid you know i feel like juliet star he kind of showed this in some of his patrols he would be able to tell the clan what places to avoid um, in order to stay safe so we have that and then sandy mask is very resourceful and he knows you know, the dangerous spots and signs of danger when it comes to living on the beach. So between them, they've kind of got things under control. And then Bruce is their mediator, which I feel like makes a lot of sense because Bruce, he's kind of shown us, has this very unique kind of aura. Like the youngsters are just drawn to him, they listen to him, they like being around him and they want to learn a lot from him. So he as a mediator feels kind of like the right choice and you know as they kind of leave and go out I imagine they meet with these other cats so maybe they've absorbed these other cats into their clan as well like Wikipedia and Oleander Whisker and Sleek and Falling so this is like an ever-growing sort of drift clan and in the future like I said when we come across strays or you know um, 
abandoned kits, we are going to be sending them to Juliet Star so that he can include them into Drift Clan. So okay, that is that. And now guys, we are going to be pairing up some mates. So we currently have three females within the founders. We've got Snail Dusk, Bloom Freckle, and Child Stripe. And then we have two males. Alright, two adult males. We have Cicada Lotus and Blue Stripe. So Cicada Lotus over here, he is going to be taking as his particular mate, um, Snail Dusk, who is a loving female. Now, I don't know how this is going to- they both are wearing flowers too, which I think is so adorable. I don't know how this is going to go, because Snail Dusk has been mates with a childish male beforehand. She was mates with Dawn Valley, and that stressed her out and didn't go too well. We shall see how it goes with Cicada Lotus. Um, if they break up, then I will not force them to be together. But Cicada Lotus, you know, out of the females here, he feels comfortable around Snail Dusk, and he feels like she would make like a good mother to a set of kids. So these guys are going to be connected to each other, and next up we have Blue Stripe who's the youngest male that we have, right? And his parents are Daisy Wish and Iris Quiver. So he is going to take on as his mate, the beautiful Bloom Freckle. And this is kind of interesting because this is the first, I think you guys told me a while ago, that when these lines over here, when they're sharp, it means they're incompatible, which, you know, the previous pair, they have, actually all the pairs we've had so far have sharp lines. Um, if they're flat, they're neutral, and if they're squiggly like this, they're compatible. And I have not seen a pair that we've put together so far that have had squiggly lines. So this is actually very exciting. But Blue Stripe, I think he is fascinated by Bloom Freckle. And I think the adorable thing about this is Bloom, like Blue Stripe looks so cute. And he's insecure. And again, he's like a plushie. And I feel like Bloom Freckle might be the one to look after Blue Stripe. Do you guys remember a while ago when Bruce was mated to Bloom Freckle and he was doting on her and she got, and he was very loyal to her, but she got irritated by that. She didn't like how, um, how much he was doting on her. She felt smothered by it. So I can kind of see how instead of being the one doted on, Bloom Freckle likes to do the doting, and in this situation, like situation, she's the one who's going to be looking after Blue Stripe. So I'm actually excited about this. So there we go. This is official between them, and you know she's vengeful. He's insecure. I can see her actually going out of her way to like get vengeance on everyone who slights Blue Stripe because she's very protective over him. So that's kind of adorable between the two of them. So we're gonna go ahead and see guys if we luck out on these guys or not. Snail Dusk I feel like hasn't had any successful relationships which is quite unfortunate. She was with Dawn Valley, I mean that didn't pan out for her. She was with Sandy Dusk, that didn't pan out for her. And now I guess we'll see whether she and Cicada Lotus work out or not. But it seems as though Bloom Freckle and Blue Stripe will have no problem with each other. So okay, that is done and dusted. I think we are ready um, to head over to events, skip a moon, and see how things are going to go. But um, before we do that, I do want to go ahead, actually, and it's going to be strange to have like such a tiny, tiny, well, compared to this, we're going to have a lot less to go through, but I'm kind of looking forward to that. So okay, Otter Clan, we want to try and befriend River Clan, and I am no longer Look at how many outsiders we have. I am no longer inviting anyone in. We, we don't, we are okay with this other clan, but no. Uh, we don't want to invite the outsiders in. Okay, let's go ahead guys and skip a moon. Okay, this is exciting. This is exciting. Ah! Oh, Feather Clan has no deputy. What? What? What do you mean Feather Clan has no deputy? Hold on a second. Hold on hold on a second, my brain. Wait a second. Feather Clan has no deputy. 
terrible weather convinces Daisy Wish to skip this gathering. Any befriending of River Clan can wait until the sky isn't caving in on Feather Clan. Okay. While on a walk in the territory, Dawn Valley, uh, with Dawn Valley, Froster unexpectedly had her single kitten with help from her mate. <gasps> oh my goodness. <gasps> Smoke Kit! Guys! We have a sweet male newborn with pale green eyes. Smoke Kit. This is adorable. This is so cute. And everything is worth it. I do not regret anything. The wait, the amount of moons we waited for him to be born. It was so worth it. He is so cute. He is so cute. So another little male that we had born into the clan. Okay, Daisy Wish has been resistant to retiring, but the aches and pains of old age have worn her down. She approaches Frosta and is honored for her tireless service. Okay, I thought Daisy Wish died, but no, she hasn't died. She just has been retired. She is old, she's tired, she does not have nine lives. Okay, that is okay, Daisy Wish. You should rest. You have done a very good job so far. I think it is okay for you to rest. Okay, guys, so that is done here. Births, um, we didn't have any deaths, thank goodness, but we had a little kitten. Okay, I feel like it was really good. We did all that exiling and splitting before the kitten was born so that he is not going to be lost uh, like among anyone else. Okay, so everything else is worked out, and now we're gonna dive into relationships, which I'm so excited about because this is the first time we're gonna be checking out the relationships with just this amount of cats. Okay, let's take a look. So Cicada Lotus trusts Dawn Valley with a very important task. Okay, and you know what? This is also gonna be interesting to see like how everyone is doing following the separation. So I wonder what this particular task was. I wonder if Cicada Lotus entrusted Dawn Valley with something to do with his new mate, Snail Dusk. Hmm, that'd be uh, like intriguing. Okay, Cicada Lotus says he hopes Bloom Freckle has a nice day. Iris Quiver helps Bloom Freckle hide from a clanmate. Who is Bloom Freckle hiding from? Frostar and Smoke Kit don't start their days without one another. Okay, that is too cute. That is too cute. Frostar hears Cicada Lotus laugh at a clanmate's joke, even though it was lame. Okay. Frostar and Dawn Valley have been sickeningly lovey dovey all day. Of course they have. Of course they have. Because. Uh, just. It makes sense. It makes sense. Of, of course they have. They just had a kit together. They just had a little itty bitty kitten together. Okay, Smoke Kit helps Daisy Wish pick burrs out of her fur. That is adorable. Like, literally, someone who just retired and a kit that was just born. That's too cute. Okay, Daisy Wish and Smoke Kit have to break up a fight between their clanmates. Who is fighting? Why is the newborn kitten breaking up a fight with the retired, retired cat? Why? Snail Dusk takes Daisy Wish out to look at the stars, explaining the constellations to her. Okay, that's very nice of uh, Snail Dusk. Snail Dusk is amazed at how skilled Blue Stripe really is. That is good. Iris Quiver and Snail Dusk drink from the same puddle. Dawn Valley prevents something from falling on Frostar. Look at Dawn Valley. Look at Dawn Valley. He is doing the protecting, not being protected, which is how we always viewed Dawn Valley, because it looks like a little plushie. Dawn Valley and Blue Stripe always challenge one another. Okay. Child Stripe tells Snail Dust to count on her in a difficult situation, which is really good. Child Stripe had a terrible dream about Smoke Kit. Oh no. Oh no. That's not good. After something happens, Blue Stripe and Cicada Lotus find comfort in one another's company. And you know, as these two who have newly uh, gotten mates, I wonder if they are like bonding with each other trying to figure this whole situation out so that's really nice but that was that was fairly quick a lot quicker than we've usually been spending but it seems as though even though there have been some like little fights here and there uh we haven't kind of gotten any indication as to who the fights might be in between so i suppose they weren't big enough to be noted 
but all in all it seems like everyone is doing quite well and kind of helping each other like cope and grow together but we do have we do have apparently uh no yeah daisy wish she's retired so we she's an elder we don't have a deputy so that is something i'm gonna have to sort out um by the time we do the next episode so okay guys with that said and done i am going to leave off here thank you so much for watching or do i want to do it now no 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 no, no. we will wait I'll, i will think about this and i'll get it done in the next when we come back next time we'll have a deputy but okay guys with that said and done i'm gonna leave off here thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed and i will see you all next time Bye bye